Oh, I love the way you all bow so politely, and, and that's really good. Remember, if you want to be treated with respect, you have to show it first. Does that make sense? Yeah! All right, the two most important techniques of all martial arts are developed. Concentration, self-control, and respect. Let's do it one more time. Everybody, resting position. Class, catch up. And bow. Very, very good. And who remembers what the tension develops? Yes, sir. Self-control, sir. Self-control and concentration. Good, and what was the second, what was the, was the bow develop? That respect, right? Yes, sir. Oh, you did so good, Brandon. All right, we're going to demonstrate the second most important thing we practice in classes. Are you ready? Yes! Right there, you always have to say yes, sir, or no, sir. Everybody look right here in my eyes. Go ahead. Yes, yes sir! I know not everybody can see it, but if you can, when anybody ever is talking to you, make sure you answer right away. You can always tell who's paying the best attention, because if I ask a question like, is everybody ready to go? Yes, yes! Boy, the students that are listening the best, they say, yes, sir, right away. The other ones who aren't listening as good kind of say, well, yes, sir, right? And we do that by developing the three rules of concentration. So let's do it together. The three rules of concentration. Face your partner. Attention. The first rule of concentration is what? Focus three rules. What happened to the first rule? The first rule is focus your eyes. Everybody say, focus your eyes. The second rule is focus your mind. Is focus your body. Focus your body. Sit down on one knee. Let's have Chloe demonstrate one time. Chloe, stand up. Yes, sir. Tension. The three rules of concentration. Ready? Go. Focus your eyes. Focus your mind. Focus your body, sir. You did a really good job. You know how important that is in the classroom because you can't learn. Oh, I'm glad all you uh, NAPMA viewers can uh, sit in on one of our staff meetings. I have three of my SWAT team members here, and we're discussing philosophies that we're going to be implementing in class this next week. Uh, thanks for joining in with us and thanks for coming ladies. Uh, what we're going to work on is uh, I want the philosophy in our classes to be consistent and done in short bursts. You know, I don't want you to take these big long philosophical discussions, but I want you between action, like when you're helping people, uh, when I say stop, okay, let's break into teams. If, the, if I give you three people, if I give you four, if I give you seven, you're able to huddle them together and get this message across quickly and efficiently and try to get them involved as well, you know, like answering back or did you get that? And constantly ask for response so you make sure you enforce those three rules of concentration which are to focus your eyes, focus your mind, focus your body. Okay, the first philosophy that we're going to introduce in the classes this week is called the Olympic Theory. So here's how it's done. Uh, the Olympic theory is, the way it's taught is that you take your class and you put one person over on this side of the room, you know, like uh, maybe four or five feet away, but within the earshot, and then you take the rest of the class and you put them over here and you say, out of all the people in Taekwondo, uh, we use Taekwondo or, or basketball or soccer, it's got to be an Olympic sport or swimming, out of all the people in any one sport, how many of all the athletes in the world could afford to go to the Olympics, have the talent and the time and the training. How many could go? It would be this one out of every hundred. You know, maybe one percent. And so let's pretend we put this person who could make it over here and the people who couldn't make it over here because they didn't have the talent or the time or the coaching or who knows what, but they didn't make it. So let's pretend that we had a hundred people. One would be over here and all of you would be a hundred. Which group would be the majority? Well, you would be the majority, right? This one person would somehow be different. That's the Olympic theory. Find out who the best person is. Who, if you wanted to be a swimmer and you knew that this one person had made it to the Olympics and all of these people didn't make it, who would you want to get advice from? Well, of course you'd want to go to the person who made it. You want to find the, the top one, two, or three percent in anything are the ones that are getting the best results. The Olympic theory is about finding those people and not getting stuck in the crowd. Because when you're in those other 90, you know, nine people over there, or 97, it's because it's one to three percent, you're looking around and you're saying, well, I don't know anybody who's eating like that or training like that or has that kind of attitude. Uh, those are really, those attitudes and those qualities are really reserved for the champions. Those are the people that are doing it and getting the results. So when you're talking to the kids, you can say, like, these 97 might say, oh, smoking's okay as long as you, you know, my grandfather smoked until he was 97. Or they might say, oh, it doesn't matter what you eat. You know, the Olympic theory is I want to find out who the best is. And that's what I'm going to find, that's what I'm going to copy, that person. Uh, they're the person who says, or they're the people who say, hey, it really matters what you eat. You have to have a clean diet and you, you have to train with intensity and focus. In fact, the skills we teach at black belt level are the skills that that one to three percent have. It's the Olympic theory. So let's implement it that this, this week in this classes, all right? Starting today, all right?
All right, we talked some good ideas. Now it's time for your assignment. Yes, your assignment. You just don't get away with uh, talking about things. We've got to do something. Uh, here in my NAPMA national staff meeting, where I'm talking to every NAPMA school that's watching this tape, uh, I'm going to be giving an assignment, and this month's assignment is the testing board. The testing board is one place in your school, preferably a big board, like maybe a 4x8 uh, dry erase board or a chalkboard or a, uh, preferably one of the ones you can stick pins in, where you keep everything you need to know about testing. Everybody's name, when the test date is, when the next test date is after that. Uh, what kind of requirements does a student need? Do they need to bring a parent permission slip? Do they have to bring guests? Everything is in one place where everybody can see it. Every parent can see it, every student can see it, every teacher can see it. And at the end of classes, what part of your classes, you bring everybody over to the testing board and you say, okay, whose name is on the testing board for the next test? And they, all the kids stand up and you say, now remember, here are your requirements and there's a checklist there that everybody can see, even the parents sitting over in the parents section. And it's a really uh, interesting and easy way to talk about testing in your school to make sure everybody has a crystal clear understanding of how testing works. And so that's the testing board. Now we used to keep it in binders, sometimes we'd have information in flyers at the school. The best place is a testing board. Nobody ever forgets about it. Every assistant instructor, instructor can look over at the testing board and say, hey, isn't your name on the next test? Well, let's get ready for that. And it's one place where everything can be kept, where everybody can see it, and it really simplifies that whole testing situation, which can be quite complicated, as you know. So that's my assignment for this month, the testing board. Let me know how it goes. <laughs>